In a prison in North Korea, CIA agent Evelyn Salt is being hurt to try to make her confess her spy activity and they won't believe them when she says she's just here for business. Sometime later, her fellow agent Ted comes to rescue her by accepting to do a prisoner exchange. Salt is confused by this because the rules say one life isn't worth saving if it will ruin the cover of hundreds, and Ted agrees it's true, but the CIA was forced into doing this by Salt's friend Mike. When he found out what happened to her, Mike petitioned the Senate and the State Department, so the CIA gave in to avoid bad publicity. Two years later, Salt and Mike are married and living together with a dog and Mike's spiders, since he's an arachnologist. Salt is sticking to paperwork at the CIA for now, but one afternoon, Agent Peabody asks her for help interrogating a Russian defector that just walked in because she can speak the language. The guy's name's Orlov, and he immediately notices Salt's wedding ring, commenting a husband must be a distraction for an agent. He explains he has cancer and that he used to work for the FSB, both things get confirmed on the system and so he's allowed to share his story. In 1975, a Russian patriot came up with a plan to destroy America, he started stealing babies and training them from a young age to become the best spies in the world, drilled with idiosyncrasy and ideology. When they became old enough, these warriors were sent to the USA as sleeper agents to patiently await the day to attack from within. That day will come soon, during the funeral of the American vice president, Agent KA-12 is supposed to kill the Russian president. The Ka program is a Cold War legend, and the CIA agents think this Orlov is selling smoke, so they cut the interrogation short. When Salt's about to leave, Orlov says that the name of KA-12 is Evelyn Salt. This makes Salt believe she's being set up and asks Ted permission to call Mike because of Orlov's comment about her wedding ring, but Mike won't pick up. Peabody still needs to cover all possible options and locks Salt in an office while he argues over what to do next. Meanwhile a couple of agents try to move Orlov to a different room by taking the elevator, but Orlov takes them by surprise with a knife hidden in his shoe and kills them both. Orlov escapes the building and the CIA is so distracted with starting a tracking plan that it's easy for Salt to leave the office saying she has to pee. She manages to take the emergency stairs, but the agents finally notice and begin locking all the doors. Salt grabs a fire extinguisher to blur out all the security cameras, and Ted calls her directly to her phone to point out this makes her look guilty, but Salt doesn't care, her priority is finding her husband. She makes it to the closet with the cleaning supplies and mixes them inside a table leg, thus when the tactical team comes after her, she makes this makeshift bomb explode on their faces. Then she takes a gun from one of the agents and uses it to smash a window through which she finally escapes. After running for a couple of blocks, Salt takes a taxi and tries calling Mike again, but he still doesn't pick up. Then Salt destroys her SIM card in case she's being tracked and thinks back to when Ted told her years ago to befriend Mike. Since he was an important scientist with unrestricted access to the borders of North Korea, he could be the perfect cover to get her inside. When Salt returns to her apartment, Mike is nowhere to be seen, and there's evidence of him having been kidnapped. Salt immediately packs a bag, including a gun and a spider, and leaves through the window with her dog at the same time the CIA arrives at her place. Peabody becomes frustrated when they find the apartment empty, and Ted points out that maybe Salt is telling the truth and she's being set up. Meanwhile Salt is climbing around the building and visits her young neighbor to ask her to take care of her dog while she's gone. Salt takes the chance to change into new clothes too and begins thinking of Mike again. In the old days, Salt would show up at the museum a lot just to befriend him for the mission, but she became legitimately interested in him. Afterward, Salt leaves the building with a hat on her head, but Ted recognizes her anyway and they begin to chase her through the city. Eventually they manage to surround her on the highway, and Salt tries to explain she's innocent, someone is setting her up to distract the CIA from the real person that will be killing the Russian president. Nobody believes her, so Salt decides to jump off the highway, landing on a truck that helps her get away. The CIA and the police immediately begin chasing her in their cars, prompting Salt to begin jumping from truck to truck. When they get close enough, Peabody tries to shoot her and ends up wounding Salt on her hip, causing her to fall and continue on foot. At that moment, a biker appears on the road, and Salt gets the chance to push him away and steal his bike. This allows her to drive among the cars, leaving the CIA behind because they don't have room to follow. As Salt gets away, Peabody gets a message from his research team explaining that Salt lost her parents as a kid and was sent to Russia, which matches Orlov's story. Moments later, Salt goes to a biker bar to cover her wound with a pad and change into new clothes as she keeps thinking about Mike and the happiness they had together. Next she takes a bus to New York, and she remembers the day she was freed from the Korean prison. She confessed to Mike that she was actually CIA and their thing couldn't be, but Mike didn't care and asked her to be his anyway. When Salt arrives in New York, she stays at a luxury hotel under a fake name and steals a coat from a hanger. In her room, she takes off her contacts and her fake teeth, revealing the truth, she is indeed a Russian sleeper agent, and Orlov showing up had been part of the plan to let her know her next objective. Salt has brought a huge amount of weapons with her, and she takes the venom from the spider to poison her bullets. She also uses a computer to download the maps of the subway system tunnels to start planning the assassination of the Russian president. 
While she dyes her hair black, she remembers the day she was accepted into the CIA and how easily she convinced everyone that she wanted to protect the USA. The next day, the streets are crowded with all the people that came to say goodbye to the vice president, and the CIA is there on the lookout for Salt so she takes the subway. The station that should stop at the church is closed because of the funeral, but Salt's prepared, she releases a smoke bomb in the wagon and while everyone is distracted, she jumps out of the subway, using the map she downloaded to find her way through the tunnels. This allows her to enter the church undetected, and she begins fighting every guard she comes across to make her way to the room that is exactly under the church podium, where the Russian president is currently giving a speech. Ted and Peabody receive a message that they're losing guards and go to investigate, but Salt is many steps ahead of them already. She puts a bomb on the roof of the room, and when it explodes, the floor crumbles under the Russian president, making him fall into the room underneath. Salt wastes no time and shoots him with a poison bullet, the noise she makes allows Peabody to find her. To Peabody's surprise, Salt actually drops her gun and lets the cops arrest her. As she's taken out of the building, Ted yells at her, hurt by her betrayal. The Russian president is declared dead on his way to the hospital, and while Salt is taken away in the police car, she remembers her childhood in the training facility. When she was still a kid, she was given full plastic surgery to change her face plus the new name Evelyn Salt with an American backstory. The kid in the bed next to her wondered if Salt would ever miss them, but Salt didn't reply. When the police car reaches the bridge, Salt begins beating up the officers and causes the vehicle to crash against other cops. After hitting as many police cars as possible, Salt guides her car off the bridge and manages to land safely, thanks to the airbags. A curious crowd begins forming around the crash and Salt uses the chance to escape without being noticed, stealing a hat from a shop nearby on her way out. Sometime later, Salt takes a boat and can't help thinking about the day she was brought back to America to be taken by a new family with whom she would patiently until she got new orders. When Salt makes it to the harbor, she sees on TV that there are anti-American protests across Russia because of what they see as an act of terrorism against their president. In a bar nearby, Salt reunites with Orlov, who calls her his perfect creation because he's always been the guy behind the cop project and the one who trained her. He also scolds her again for getting married, but Salt explains it was part of looking normal. To make sure Salt is still loyal to the Russian cause, Orlov takes her to his hideout and reveals Mika is being held hostage in the water. Instead of shooting him, which would be easy to endure, they begin to slowly drown him to see if Salt will react. Salt keeps a poker face, but it's clear in her eyes how much it hurts her to be unable to do anything. Now they know they can trust Salt, everyone welcomes her warmly, and Salt recognizes these men as other kids that were trained with her. Afterward Orlov takes to her in private, explaining the next step is to seize control of this country's atomic weapons. Salt will meet an agent in NATO uniform at a plane here, and he'll give her the final instructions. This means Salt has all the information she needed and in a sudden turn of events, she grabs a bottle and uses it to quickly kill Orlov for ruining her life. Then she grabs a bunch of grenades and guns in order to kill everyone in the base without hesitation. Unfortunately her revenge doesn't taste sweet because when she checks on Mike he's obviously dead. Salt grieves as she remembers how happy she had been on the day of her wedding. Moments later, Salt goes to take the assigned plane and is delighted to see Schneider, the boy that said he would miss her. He's become a powerful colonel and he'll be taking Salt as his attaché to the White House, where they have to kill the American president. Schneider also points out there must be other sleeper agents inside already. A few hours later, they arrive in Washington and Salt puts on a man custom to match the fake ID that Schneider got him. They go through White House security with no issues, and they notice the CIA is attending the meeting with the president as well. As part of the plan, Schneider suddenly begins pretending he's going crazy and pushes Salt away before shooting at everyone in his path. The guards take the president away right before Schneider activates an explosive, and Ted tells his co-workers he thinks Salt may be around. Salt is using the distraction created by Schneider to steal a card key and get rid of her costume. She sees the agents taking the president to a bunker by using the elevator, so after they're gone, she knocks out the guard to then force open the doors and climb down the elevator shaft. The president and the agents make it to the bunker, thus Salt rushes to sneak inside the corridor right before the doors close, knocking out any guard she finds in the way. While Salt destroys the panel that controls the doors and the cameras, the team informs the president that Intel has confirmed Russia is getting its missiles ready. The president asks to start looking at their nuclear options while some agents go out to check what happened to the doors, but Salt easily beats them up. The president gets in contact with some army leaders to get the authorization code for their nuclear weapons. The White House security team discovers Salt is approaching them and Ted asks for a weapon, but the guard refuses because of protocol related to the president's presence. Ted suddenly shows his true colors and takes the weapons from the guard by force to then kill everyone in the room. Ted reveals he's also a Russian sleeper agent and asks the president to collaborate. When the president refuses, Ted kills him too. When Salt finally makes it inside, she finds the final door locked and must talk to Ted through the intercoms. Ted explains he never told her the truth because making friends is dangerous, and she didn't recognize him because he was in a class ahead of hers. A new security team is already outside trying to bring down the door while Salt pays attention to what Ted is doing, learning that he'll launch nuclear missiles into the Middle East to incite those countries to attack the USA. 
Saul tells Ted she wants to help him and be with him, but when Ted is about to open the door, he sees something shocking on the news. The Russian president is just fine and his death had been attributed to temporary paralysis, which had been Salt's plan with the spider poison all along. Ted realizes Salt stopped being loyal to Russia when she fell in love with Mike and to get her back, he starts explaining he was the one that had to convince Orlov to use Salt as the agent for the assassination. Orlov hadn't wanted to at first because he knew she wouldn't come out of it alive and he was fond of her. Ted is also the one that asked Orlov to take Mike hostage, hearing this makes Salt so furious that she starts shooting at the glass to get him, but the window's bulletproof. While Ted uses the president's hand to authorize the missiles, Salt changes tactics and shoots at the wall to reveal the system that keeps the locks up. By destroying it she finally gains access to the office and begins fighting Ted hand to hand. At first Ted seems to easily overpower her, but soon Salt manages to push him away and rushes to the desk to stop the launch. At that moment, the security team makes its way inside and knocks Salt to the floor with a shot, which she survives because she's wearing a vest. Salt gets arrested, but since the security cameras were off, Ted is still seen as CIA and innocent. Peabody arrives to inspect the scene and hears about what happened with Orlov and his gang, which makes him confused about Salt's intentions. As the guards begin escorting Salt out, she notices Ted taking a pair of scissors from the doctor tending his wounds, so she doesn't hesitate to act first. The chains of her handcuffs are thrown against Ted's neck and Salt jumps over the railing, quickly killing him. Moments later, Salt is put in a helicopter with Peabody, who demands some answers. Salt tells him about Ted, and when Peabody doesn't believe her, she points out she could have killed him and the president back in the church but she didn't. She knows there are more sleeper agents and she swears she wants to kill them all for revenge. Seeing her determination and getting a message that confirms Salt killed Orlov, Peabody realizes she's the only defense they have against moles, but nobody will believe her story. They'll have to do this the illegal way, so Peabody releases her handcuffs when nobody is watching, and when the helicopter flies above the river, Salt jumps out as Peabody pretends she took him by surprise. Peabody also asks the helicopter to look around, but Salt is already swimming out of the river and running through the forest. Sometime later, the media reports that the new president of the USA has traveled to Russia for a peacekeeping visit. During the speech he gave there, he announced all sleeper agents including Salt are dead. It is also revealed he was orphaned as a kid during an accident here in Russia, implying he's a sleeper agent as well. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.